Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for our very first guest in the studio, a young woman who has applied her background in technology to ensure that she enables Nigerians, both young and old, to have a savings culture. Now she's co-founded the Piggy Bank, and not only her, she and her two, her other two co-founders have ended up winning the Future Awards Africa Prize for Technology. They've done, gone on to do great things for themselves. Today we're going to be speaking with Odunwaya. She'll be sharing with us her journey, how she started off with Piggy Bank, and how the journey has been so far, what the expectations for the future are. All this and more today on Hello Nigeria. Thank you so much, Odunwaya Ewini, for joining us. Thank you Welcome for having Odunwaya. me. Welcome, Odunwaya. Thank you. All right, so I'm, let's just... First of all, congratulate you for winning the Future Awards Africa Prize 2018 for Thank technology. You. Thank you. <laughs> because you're, you're doing something really amazing and encouraging the savings culture amongst people young and old. So let's, I always like to find out how people reacted when they won. It's like a favorite thing of mine. So I think I'll start with that. How was your reaction when you heard your name? What were you doing? Were you chatting, doing Instagram? Um, um, we typically do a lot of talking when we're together. So we're just talking, like mostly about people who had won before us because we had a lot of sitting to do. So. Did you talk about me? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. So we were just talking, and then it was time for our category. So naturally, we sat up, and then they said, you guys won. So we don't have a lot of outsized reactions. So we just go collect it and, oh, you know. Okay. And, you know, taking that prize home, how did it make you feel? I mean, I, I guess for us, it's, it's validation. Um, you do work, and then people are using the platform. So w once in a while, it, it is nice to get recognized for the work that you're doing. It's nice to know that people are watching and taking note of the, like, the work that you're doing. So that's how it felt. It felt like, okay, look, people are sitting up and taking notice of Piggy Bank and the work that we're doing with it. So. Did you always grow up having a savings culture? Because, you know, most people would think, oh, for her to start piggy bank, she probably had a piggy bank when she was growing up. Now, for those who don't know, the Nigerian version of piggy bank is called Kolo. Kolo. It's a plastic, uh, it's a wooden box. Wooden or Where we're iron. allowed to metal throw in. Sometimes. Yeah, me metal or wooden. But most, yeah. most times wooden. And we're allowed to throw in our money. as We're made to throw in our money as babies, 20 naira, 5 naira, 10 naira. And our parents tell us that they use it to buy something for us at the end of the year. And they end up keeping it in their pockets and using it to buy something for themselves. Should I shout out to all the moms and dads that did that. <laughs> but did you have a savings culture growing up, or is it something we, you had to learn? We, I don't know. We did. We had to. For the most part, my mom always took the money, like <laughs> most moms. But when we had, when we had like the money in our hands, it did go into a box or an envelope or whatever it is you're saving at the time. And then she had like a super strong financial culture. So I guess we did have that imbibed. Although I do have to say that had nothing to do with starting Piggy Bank. That, that was a whole different motivation entirely. So how did Piggy Bank start? So um, well, it started um, December 2015. Um, somebody who had a wooden box broke it. And it turned out she'd been saving a thousand naira every day throughout the year. And then Joshua was like, ah, do you guys think we can digitize this process? And then we went into the group chat. And by the time we were done, there was like a... Um, an idea, a verbal prototype of what the product will work like um, mm -hmm. already out there. So we just back and forth on how we can help people make that process more sustainable. So the, the Twitter lady basically motivated the entire thing. It was just like trying to improve upon something that already existed. So that was how two weeks after that conversation, the first version of the platform was launched. Okay, so um, there's an app for Piggy Bank. Yeah, there's an app and then there's the website. You can, just, you can access it from wherever. Who created the app? Um, I would say our CTO, Sumto. Okay, nice. Yeah. All right, so now let's look at how it works. You know, how does Piggy Bank work? Uh, well, it's, it's super simple. The, the same way you decide to put 100 naira into your physical box every day, the same way you log on to Piggy Bank, create an account, and then say, I want to save 100 naira every day, or 500 naira weekly, or 5,000 naira monthly, and I want to save up to 500K, or 1 million naira, and then we calculate how much that would be in the interval that you've selected, and then the rest is automated. Oh. So we just go into your account, save it into your wallet. Go into your account, save it into your wallet. And then by the time you have finished saving up, up to that, you can then withdraw. But we do have a catch. Um, while you can access your normal bank account at any time, you can, um, on, a, on Piggy Bank, you can only access your funds for free once every quarter okay. so that you are able to be disciplined and you save for at least three month bursts. Okay, so basically you can't just get access to it anyhow you want. No, we are okay. trying to make you save. Oh, okay, good. So now my, my next question will be how many people, how many customers do you have now? 
um, um, pig, on piggy bank. Right now we have almost 200,000 customers. Wow. Okay. And it's impressive to hear that, you know, but there's still so much more that can be done. And I know that there must have been some Nigerians who have showed some level of fear when you launched the app, seeing how they'd been, um, there'd been several other apps or Ponzi schemes, e.g. MMM, that defrauded young Nigerians, young and old, and they're wondering, is this not another version of MMM? So did you have some sort of stumbling block from people accepting Piggy Bank at first when you launched it? We did, yes. Um, naturally, people have an aversion to technology. And then at the moment when we launched it, it was right on the heels of MMM just having like passed its wave across Nigeria. So we had to like stay on message, right? Unified message and invest heavily in proper customer service and make sure that our services were transparent and clear and that the platform was doing exactly what we built it to do. And that's what we've been doing for the past three years. We've managed to just stay directly on one singular message and make sure that the mission was being accomplished every single time. Okay. Beyond that, Joe, what other challenges have you faced since you started the piggy bank process? For the um, adoption, really, it's still it's an ongoing process. You never stop trying to convince people to use the platform. And so that's a process that we go on. And even though you meet people who like adopt it easily, the further you go, the harder it is to convince people to join the platform, right? So you keep having to tell people, this is what we do. You know, we've been in existence for a long time. And then the other thing is like natural Nigerian startup problem is the funding. Although we then got lucky last year when we were able to complete our seed funding raise. For the most part, like most Nigerian tech startups, you have to go out and look for the money. Okay, so talking about savings, um with the structure of piggy bank, what's the difference between it and every other commercial bank where people go to save money these days? Because if I want to put money in piggy bank, I want to know what's the difference. What's that catchy thing about piggy bank that should draw me to it instead of me taking it to another bank I mean, that I, I already know? The first thing would be the convenience. It's completely digital. No paper processes, no uh, having to leave your house to go to a particular place to fill a form. And then the discipline, it's strictly targeted at people who want to save towards the future. So yeah, you can have so many things doing so many purposes financially in your life, right? But do you want to save for the future? Do you want to save for a rainy day? Our economy is kind of shaky right now. What are you trying to plan? What are your future plans? And then you look at that and then you look at all of the available platforms and it becomes clear to you that if you want to save in a disciplined way, in a way where at the end of 365 days you have a measurable amount put aside, then you will choose our platform. Do you have rewards for people who meet their sa saving targets? Um, we do not have rewards for people who meet their savings target yet, but that's something that we're looking at. But we do have rewards for people who invite other people into the platform. So we mostly grow because our customers are telling other people how great the, uh, the platform has been for them. So when you invite someone into the platform, you get something, and then the person you brought in also gets something to kind of continue that chain. All right, now let's talk about partnerships. We know that partnerships are great for business. Now, not every partnership works. You and your two partners, you've come together, you've done this amazing work, you've won awards together, you've gotten grants together. But let's talk about how you decided to come together. You mentioned that when you saw this on Twitter, you went to the WhatsApp group <laughs> and you just quickly talked about yeah. digitizing this. So that means you already had a relationship before. So tell us about your history with your two other co-founders. Okay, we, we all met in Covenant University. So we've known each other for about nine, eight, nine years. So we've been working together for a while and right after school, we've started ventures together. This isn't our first one. So we've start, we had a couple that fell by the wayside. We had some successful ones. And so it was just natural that we worked together on this one as well. So we've had a pretty long-term relationship. We've been friends for a bit. Okay, so do you have any background knowledge in technology? Or do your partners, <laughs> you and your partners, yeah. do you have background knowledge in technology? So I studied computer engineering. Okay. Joshua, who is our chief marketing person, studied computer science. And Somto, who is our CTO, studied mechanical engineering. So I'd say we all have tech backgrounds, like Basically. in varying degrees. Yeah. Having, having yeah. you know, successfully run this partnership with them for years now, what would you, so be some of your tips you'd give to people, budding business persons, entrepreneurs, who want to go into some sort of partnership? So what are some of the tips you'd give them on how they can navigate through that? I mean, I guess it would be like um, setting the right boundaries and mutual respect, right? Um, when you each have your strengths, play to those, and then don't um, encroach into someone else's area of expertise without the appropriate level of respect, right? So I handle operations right now. We have someone who handles tech. We have someone who handles marketing. So I don't pretend to be an expert at marketing when it is time for 
just try to make his decisions, right? I don't pretend to be an expert at the, the coding aspect. I can understand it, but you handle it, right? So we naturally will defer to your decisions in those areas that we've already decided as a group for you to handle. So it will be respecting the boundaries that you've set with your, um, your partners, respecting those boundaries, and then just having that level of respect. And I guess across board, it will be respecting the other person because once you do that, it's easy for all the other chips to fall into place. You don't over, like, over encroach, you don't under encroach. It's just like a perfect balance. And I will say that you will fight, you have arguments always, but as long as the respect is there, it always ends up being resolved amicably and in a way that moves the company forward. Let's look at the future towards Africa Prize for t um, Technology 2018. And everybody has what a certain award means to them. What would you say that the future awards Africa Prize for Technology means to you and then collectively to the team? For us, or for me, I think for me, the Future Awards Prize, it just represented the fact that like everything we've done so far, it means something, right? Where we've, we've found something. You know, you start a company and there's a 50-50 chance it will fail or succeed, right? So getting that award means that like you are on like a particular path and for the team, I guess it means that we've assembled the right team because we couldn't do it on our own. So we've, behind three of us, there's about six to seven other people who come to work every day and work alongside us. So assembling the right team. So the award really represented that we've all come together and like this, this road that we're on, this mission that we've all decided to accomplish, it might be the right one. There might be something there. Okay. If piggy bank didn't work, was there, going, was there a plan B in place? Well, n not for me, no. I don't know about to <laughs> so I don't have a plan B yet. <laughs> Why? So, yeah. um, I mean, you, you go all in when, like, commitment is very important, right? So, mm. and we sta we've started, like, companies together, like I said, and we just went all in in every venture, even the ones that ended up not working out. And you make your mistakes and you move on. So, if the bank didn't work, we take it as, okay, this one didn't work. What's the next one? So, you commit to it. If it doesn't work out, you move on. But you have to commit to it first. We know that the Future Awards Africa is very big on impact. Impact not just for you, but for the next generation. So is Piggy Bank also looking to mentor young people in the area of technology? I mean, yes, eventually. But first, we are trying to help them become financially free, right? So that's the entire mission statement is to help people better manage their finances. In our opinion, for a while now, like the young people have been left out in the area of financial management. Most like financial institutions cater to the older people. So our aim is to help younger people. We don't leave older people out, but we are trying to focus on people whose habit is tech to better manage their finances, to have a clearer outlook of what their financial future looks like. And then eventually we will bring in people to mentor them in technology, but for now our focus is on the finances. So now you have convinced me and I want to open an account so that every month Piggy Bank can deduct a certain fraction from my monthly income. How do I go about this? Um, you can just go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download the app, piggybank.ng, and then you can just visit the website, www.piggybank.ng. It takes like two minutes to sign up. All okay. right. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. We've been speaking with Odunwayo Ewene, the co-founder of um, Piggy Bank, and they've done so much with regards to helping young people build a savings culture and secure their future. Now, they won the Future Awards Africa Prize for Technology 2018, but I know that the sky is indeed not the limit, but the starting point. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.